is Joe at supportfortheshort.org. Well, we've come to the end of another year here at Support for the Short, and everything appears to be, quote, business as usual, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because our good friend, uh, Heidism, is in better shape than ever. Uh, Heidism is on the rise everywhere we look. And let me say this, just so you, the listener, know where I'm coming from. Heidism is all about negativity and prejudice against people who are short. It is not about prejudice against people who are tall. They're the beneficiaries of heightism, and they don't like to hear that, unfortunately. We, short people, are the victims of it. Let me make that absolutely clear. Anyone who tells you that tall people are victims of discrimination are either out-and-out liars, or they're deluded, or they're brainwashed, or they're tall themselves, and want to protect their turf by turning the truth 180 degrees in the opposite direction and painting themselves as some sort of victims. By the way, when they complain, usually about minor things, they're taken very seriously. When you complain about major things, you know, major uh, social problems, you are not taken seriously. This is the incredible poignancy of heightism. To think that some toddler who's had the world at his feet can be taken seriously about some stupid, idiotic, minor difficulty, and you, the short person or short guy, can be made an object of ridicule and laughter when you even voice the tiniest peep about the major injustices that are labeled against you, almost always without impunity on the part of the ridiculers. Before I bring on my guest, and you already know that I have a guest uh, because you've seen it on the homepage of the website, I just want to review a few topics in the world of the short that have uh, transpired, you know, in the last year, and go over some things that I might not have touched upon in the recent past. I haven't done too many broadcasts of late, but heightism is now out in the open in the world of politics. Donald Trump's labeling of Marco Rubio in the Republican debates earlier this year as little Marco demonstrates clearly just how acceptable heightism really is. No one would call a so-called big man big so-and-so and expect it to be taken as an insult, unless maybe I did it. You know, but uh, uh, Marco Rubio, by the way, is not on page with heightism. Instead of calling Trump a heightist SOB and saying something like, I don't think my height has anything to do with my qualifications for president of the U.S., he countered with a stupid remark about the size of Trump's hands, which, by the way, are not small. They're good size. Stupid little short man with his height-increasing boots. It's basically what he is. Instead of using this as an opportunity, he blows it completely. Now, let's get to Hillary, I mean Hillary Clinton, uh, the heightist uh, uh, lady that she is. I shouldn't even call her a lady, by the way. She's a little bit more subtle than Donald Trump, which makes her probably more dangerous. She likes to denigrate short men like Vladimir Putin, but she does it covertly. Unlike Trump's overt labels, she cleverly tries to associate Putin's personality with his height. Which, of course, is old hat. She thinks she's clever. You know, I've got the video right on the homepage of support for the short, if you don't believe me. Real sleazy character she is. We can see through her like a pane of glass. Okay, so much for Hillary. I mean, Hillary. Now, let's get to Twitter. Twitter is a virtual hotbed of hatred for short men. I say short men and not short people because the vast majority of the hate there is directed at short men. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here, okay? We're getting just a little tired of pulling punches. Those little women, many of them, not all of them, celebrate tall men just like everyone else. Now, here's a fact for you. The prettier the short woman, the taller will be the men she's interested in. Did you catch that? Okay, let me repeat it. The prettier she is, short woman now, the, the higher, the taller her height requirements will be. Remember that for the future. And to just tell you something here, I don't tell women who to date. You know, this is not about telling them who to date. They can date whoever they want. I just state facts as I see them. You know, when I go to Twitter and I see comments uh, from women and they say, well, I prefer tall men, I don't retweet those tweets. When they say, I want short men exterminated, or I hate short men, or short men should die, or short men are closer to the devil, or short men uh, can go to hell, or short men can cause all the trouble in the world, those are the ones I retweet. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> there is one positive note, and I'm not going to fail to mention it, and that is that our traffic here in support for the short this month, December 2016, has exceeded any month since we've been on the internet. And that's for a little over 10 years now. It's our 10th anniversary. We came online in November of 2006, so this month is a milestone for us. Let's hope it continues. By the way, let me just say something about the media. <clears throat> I'll be as brief as I can before I get to my guest. The media people who write articles about short men generally degrade them and demean them. If you haven't noticed, the media, especially the media emanating out of the UK and the city of London, and I haven't spoken about London yet, will degrade and disparage men in, general, in a variety of ways. And not to necessarily go into racial issues here, but the men they usually disparage are usually white. 
it's something that we've been noticing for quite some time now, and I think it's time we said something about it. But, you know, be that as it may, be the heightism situation as it is, I do have a guest for you on this broadcast. Now, I don't know a great deal about him, but his name is Jim, and uh, I believe he's in his mid to late 20s. I haven't really spoken to him. We've just been corresponding by email, so he's going to... He's basically going to tell you something about himself. Uh, I'm going to give him an opportunity to go as long or as brief as he wants to. Uh, Jim, do I have you on the line? Yes. Okay. Jim, what I want you to do is tell me a little bit about yourself, you know, education, job, uh, and so forth, career, and what got you interested in the topic of heightism and what led you to my website, supportfortheshort.org. Well, sorry, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I have a master's degree and I work for Amazon and I'm engaged right now and I'm writing a book and so I've been interested in this issue of heightism for a few years and I, I saw a Joe's a video on YouTube with his uh, interview with the UK uh, newscaster and so that's what led me to uh, the support for the short website. How did you come about seeing that video? Uh, yeah, I just was typed in short people. I, was, I, I saw your website and I, I, I typed in short people and so after that I, like I checked out like your site and I made a donation and I contacted you after I saw the video. Okay, what, 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 uh, how tall are you? What should I say? What is your height? So I'm five feet, five inches. Okay, so you're a short guy. Right. That qualifies that qualifies as short in anybody's book. Mm-hmm. Have you found that uh, you've been, uh, have you experienced anything with, in re- relation to your height? Yeah, uh, one of the things that I, I noticed in, in my own experience and, and other people who are short is that it's just harder to um, like make friends and to like gain respect for the people in school or in the workplace and school day and just not take them seriously. And I did this experiment when I was in college that um, instead of wearing uh, like the normal tennis shoes that I wear, I got these tall boots and then I put like these uh, heightener insoles yeah. in the boots. And, and then I noticed that like people treat me differently when I wore the boots with the insoles and like, I was treated better that way uh, than when I was just wearing the tennis shoes and I looked like two inches shorter. Oh, so Dave, you made me what, 5'7"? Right. <laughs> Well, I think everybody, you know, every short guy notices that. You should have, you, you could have gotten some really tall boots and raised yourself like three or four inches, and you probably would have gotten even more respect. But then they probably, pro- then they probably would have said something about it. They said, did you grow in the last couple of weeks? <laughs> yeah. We got this, there's this girl that lives on, I shouldn't call her a girl, she's like 24. Uh, she lives on my floor, or she used to live on my floor. I think she moved out. And once in a while... She come, I see her around on a Saturday, and she goes out on Saturday nights, and she's got these, she's about as tall as me, by the way, and she's got these four or five inch platforms, and then when, when I see her, it's like she grew five inches, I even said to her, I said, did you grow? And then I look down at her feet, oh, okay, I see, I see why you're so much taller. Now, what do you, how do they, how do they treat you differently when you're taller, do you think? Yeah, when you're taller, uh, when you just notice more, and so it, Kind of hard to explain, but people are just friendlier to you, and then they're more receptive to you when you talk to them. Well, you know, everybody notices that. You know, that's certainly true. And I can't tell you how how easy it is to be overlooked. Or maybe you know already. It's very easy to be overlooked in any situation. And then when you are a little bit more vociferous, they tend to accuse you of having a complex. Have you ever been accused of having a short, uh, the so-called short man's complex? That's when I started to notice 
That's different. No. No. Yeah, there's just, like, verbal abuse, sexual harassment. Sexual harassment? Yeah, just, like, all kinds of things. Um, yeah, like, sexual harassment from, like, other boys and girls, and then sometimes, like, um, like adult women. Adult women? I, I, I would have loved yeah. to have been harassed by some women. I wish they would have harassed me. You know, but, uh, they, you know, that's another thing. You know, if you go to some of these UK websites, uh, they were, there was, I read an article, it was about nine years ago, from something called CAMH, uh, Canadian Mental Health or something like that. And they said that short men tend to be pedophiles, or maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not phrasing that right. They said that short men were more likely to be pedophiles, but they didn't mention women. It seems that, you know, there's a, and I found this true, and I mentioned it in the introduction to the, to the uh, uh, you coming on, is that in the UK, they love to degrade short men, even more than they love to degrade short men everywhere else. And they, they degrade men, and they degrade short men in particular because they know that they're vulnerable targets. They do it all the time. Women are just as likely to be pedophiles as, as, as men are, and I don't think it has anything to do with height. They didn't really present any evidence that I could see. They said that the, the pedophiles were an inch shorter than average. I mean, big deal. Big deal. But have you ever been, let me ask you this, have you ever been demeaned maliciously, uh, either, yeah. by, either by peers or by authority figures? Yeah, like I, uh, since you just mentioned a, like a pedophile issue, like I had a former boss, that's one job, you know, like accused me of, uh, you know, like violating the new gun law we have here in the U.S., which, you know, just like totally out of, like, line, like a, like nothing to do with that, but they actually had an accusation of that at uh, one time. You, uh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. Let me, let me, that's, I, I'm not, I, I've heard of that law, but I'm not really familiar with it. Is it to, like to, to do with sex offenders or something? Right, yeah, you accused me of being a sex offender, like Megan Law, something to do with, um, like this girl who was, young girl who was molested. Um, uh, also, since you're mentioning these statistics, like just before I uh, called you this night, I went online and I found out that like, short uh, people have more like, mental health issues. And, like you mentioned, short men are like, much more likely to be depressed and uh, commit suicide. So that, that's another issue that like, faces short people in general. You're probably referring to the Swedish study that was done a few years ago. Uh, where where the men in Sweden tend to be tall, and the shorter you go, the more the higher the death rate from suicide becomes. That's what that uh, that's what that study was. was uh, I, I may have put a link there at one time to my old website. You know, my website used to be bigger than it is uh, because I got a new template and I never uploaded everything from the old website uh, onto the new website. And I've been kind of lazy in doing that uh, lately. But I, I, it's, it's it's incredible that somebody could accuse you of something like that. Did they they didn't fire you? Did they? No, I didn't. Uh, anything else? That uh, I mean, that's a major thing. You could have seen. You could have. You should have seen a lawyer on that. Well, another thing that happened to me uh, two years ago is like I was falsely arrested for uh, uh, supposedly trafficking drugs, which I wasn't. But like my car matched the description of the drug trafficker, and so I think like, we like, are these big cops. They came after me, like three tall cops, and they really like tried to intimidate me and put words in my mouth. And I think that was related just to my shortness and my personality. And, uh, like, they didn't take me seriously when I was denying that you know, I'm not on drugs, I don't have drugs. And even after they searched my car and put me to the hospital for the drug test, and the nurse said, like, fine, I'm not on anything. And they gave me a really hard time about it. And that'd be another major example in, in my life. Did they actually arrest you? Yeah, they did. Did you spend a night in jail? Right, spent a night in jail, and then a month later, the charges were finally dropped. Yeah, you know, even though, like, they found the real guy they were looking for that night, but they still pressed charges against me anyway. Took my license. They didn't, I mean, they took your license, but they gave it back to you, right? Yeah, a month later. Did you see a lawyer about this? Yeah, I had to get a lawyer, because when I tried to contact the police. They wouldn't respond to me, and I uh, corresponded with their police chief, and then she stopped talking to me. So finally I had to get an attorney involved, and 
they they would speak to my attorney. But like that was it. Like at the end of it, they just gave me my license back. And, and it's like, well, it, it's no big deal. I mean, you're not you know, going to prison. But, like, they never apologized. Did you uh, think of taking a lawsuit of some sort, some legal action against the police? Well, my attorney said it, it wouldn't be worth it to try to press charges. So what I, I've done uh, recently is contacted my local congressman to try to get him to help me. Well, if they drop the charges, what's, I mean, how, how would the congressman help you? Yeah, I'm trying to get compensation for having my car impounded. Oh, you took your car? Okay. Please. How long did they take your car for? Uh, they just had it a couple days. But it cost a couple hundred dollars to, to get it back. Let me ask you something. Did you give them permission to search your car, or did they just do it? They just did it. Oh, okay. So they just had a description of a vehicle, but they had no plate number, and they pulled you over. Yeah. Right, they had no evidence or warrant, and they just told me to get out of the car, and they like, never actually told me why. I was being arrested until the after they handcuffed me and they yeah, got slams me against the back of my car and then yeah, they, they got mad and they said like, they tightened the handcuffs until they yeah, were too tight and so I started bleeding and then you know, when they got to the hospital they said, well, we got to loosen them up a little bit because that doesn't look good and then all our blood. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, one, that's a little thing that they do. They, they make sure they put those handcuffs on tight and they dig into your wrist. I've been thinking of doing a broadcast on this website, on the police. I, I actually recorded it, incredibly enough, but I never actually put it on. I, I'm, I'm thinking of doing that, you know, but uh, do you have any other uh, uh, stories like that? Yeah, there are major stories. Uh, I mean, just in general, I know that if I were taller, like, I just would have been treated a lot better in various situations, like in the workplace, like, like getting hired or getting promoted. <laughs> By the way, what, what is your master's degree in, if I may ask? Uh, in theology, uh, I wanted to mention a, a verse from the, the Bible, actually. Uh, in First Samuel uh, 16, verse 7, the, the Lord does not look at the, the things that man looks at, or man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And in the, the context of that passage, uh, it, it's talking about God selecting the, the new king for Israel. And, so Jesse, uh, the father of King David, you know, brings his sons to Samuel. And he brings out his tallest son first, and all of a sudden, and the next tallest, and the next tallest. And then Samuel keeps saying, no, there's not the one. And, and um, his father forgets to even bring David in. And then finally he's prodded to bring his last son in, David, who's the shortest son. And, and Samuel's like, yeah, that's the one. And, and then also uh, in Isaiah, it says that, and the size of man's sorrow is that there's nothing about him that makes him attractive to us. It, like, when you look at the Damians of Jesus, it always portrays him as this tall man. But Jesus was one from the like, men hit their faces. So he would have been, like, average, in a short height. I mean, he was a working-class boy. Like, uh, lower-class people are generally shorter, and that's, you know, like, why they stay poor. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Do you find... Now, if you have a master's degree in theology, are you a like a, a, a priest or a minister? No, I'm hoping to be a chaplain in the Air Force, but right now I'm just writing a commentary on the Bible, and I have this like, Google Plus page and YouTube page that um, like, has some of my theological work, and I'm into philosophy and politics, too, because I majored in history college. American history? Now, I, I uh, had a guest on, on a broadcast a few years ago, uh, a man named Steve Penner. And Steve Penner had his own uh, website and his own dating service. He actually had a, uh, uh, a TV show in, up in Boston. And he was the one that told me that before 1920, the shorter candidate for president actually won 55% of the presidential elections. I checked this out. It was actually higher than that. It was actually 58%. Of the presidential elections, and since 1920, it's been 80 percent the other way. Yeah. And he, he asked me, he said, "Well, you know what happened in 1920?" I said, "Well, what happened? Talk, talking pictures?" Uh, well, no, but that was true. You know, there were uh, uh, audio did come out around 1920, but women got the right to vote in 1920, and women have a tendency to vote much more for style and appearance than substance. And so you can say, in a way, that. Uh, 
women have changed the entire uh, picture of uh, men or candidates getting elected uh, to the presidency. By the way, I don't think Trump got elected solely on his height. Yet. That's yeah, but that's another story altogether. I think if he had been a short man, I don't think he would have won. Right. But uh, so when you when you did that Google search for short people, was that was a, was that the first time you'd ever looked anything up on the internet with respect to height? No, yeah, I looked up a couple of things before, uh, but yeah, that was like it's not surprising for me to like to see those results that like they're short people more likely to kill themselves. But uh, there were other like things I looked at that um, show that discrimination and the workplace. They, you know, almost all CEOs, like I think over ninety percent of them, are at least six feet tall. Of short people have a lower median income. Uh, they certainly do. It's, it's something like a thousand dollars an inch. Mm-hmm. And when I say a thousand dollars an inch, I would assume uh, it's for the same job. That's not including all the better jobs that, that people get just because they're taller. It doesn't. It doesn't include all the positions the taller man gets on the basis of his height that the shorter man never even sees. I mean, it's an incredible situation that we face all the way around. We don't have enough guns right now. And I'm not talking about guns literally. We don't have enough horses right now to really make a dent in anything. I mean, people just disparage us, uh, I mean, really wantonly, wantonly, easily, freely, and they celebrate. And they get away with it. They get away with it in practically every venue you can imagine. Have you gone to my Twitter account? No, I haven't done that yet. I have some ideas for what I think. Our short men should do uh, to you know, overcome some of these problems. Uh, the first idea would be that if you're a short man or a short woman and you're being harassed, like, or you're seeing someone else who's worse being harassed, I think a good thing to do would just use your cell phone, like make a video recording of what's happening, and then maybe even put that uh, online, stuff like that. And then uh, the second thing. Uh, that uh, like what my good friend was doing, not going to do, is that uh, you sort of just need to have more children. Like, my friend is my age, he has five kids, he wants to have like, 14, and uh, a lot of these taller people who are kind of privileged, like they don't want to be bothered with you know, having lots of kids, and so like, you know, a generation or two, like, they're just going to be gone because they're just so used to this uh, privileged life. And, it doesn't like, take much effort. And so if, if you can you know, like outbring these people, then you can help vote them and help work them. You can gang up on them. And so I think people just, short people just need to get together and like, uh, donate to an organization like yours and like, get petitions together and you know, send them to <clears throat> governments of the world. Well, we've had a very difficult time doing that. And that's for more than one reason. I mean, if you if you were to go to, and I hate to mention this, I hate I hate to mention reddit.com slash r slash short, but you don't, there's not much on the internet. There's not much dialogue on the internet with respect to height as uh, If you go there, you'll see, a, you'll see a post now and then, a thread now and then that makes a lot of sense. Here's a little piece of information for you. According to my website statistics for my hosting company, about 18% of my traffic this month came from reddit.com and I'm assuming that that was because a somebody wrote uh, uh, somebody started a thread called the best website for highest support for the short so I've gotten, I've gotten about a thousand over a thousand hits on my website that came from people reading that article now nine comments were made you would think that there would be 900 comments I mean here my website is the only website of its kind on the internet the only website that does broadcasts like this the only website that really treats the topic seriously. You've got a thousand people at least who saw that article and went to my website and nine people comment on it. And most of those comments were stupid. Utterly and completely stupid. This is the problem. Now you talk about you know getting together legislation, this and that. Well, that's not going to happen until enough people wake the hell up, unfortunately. And I'll tell you, Jim, we're coming down now right down to the... Uh, uh, as, as much as I want to as much as I want to broadcast, we've got like another two or three minutes on this on this one upload. Is there anything that you want to tell me uh, before uh, I end the broadcast? And by the way, when I end the broadcast, uh, I want you to stay on the line because I want to talk to you a little bit. Is there anything you want to say uh, to me or to the short people out there that uh, you think they need to hear? 
Yeah, well, I just want to thank you for your time. I uh, have a, a short people out there. I hope that uh, others in here in this broadcast will uh, you know, be encouraged and you know, like educated about this issue. And that it, if you're interested in talking to me about that, I'd be glad to talk to anyone about it. So, 